Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to fourth grade social studies. Welcome back to team headquarters. Uh, today for social studies, what I wanted to talk to you about was where is Indiana located in the world? So a lot of you have seen a globe or you know what a globe is and it's this big giant ball that floats through space. And on that ball, there's different uh, areas of land all around the world, places like Europe, Asia, Africa, South America, and North America. And North America is where we live. It's in the Northern Hemisphere, and it's what in most people would call the West. Um, and within North America, there are a whole bunch of countries, but some of the big ones that you for sure know are Canada, Mexico, and of course, behind me, the United States. And that is the country that we live in. And within that country, we broke it up into a whole bunch of different states. And the state that we live in is called Indiana. And obviously, so the whole state like this, and then Alaska's way over there, and Hawaii's way over there. But we live in the state called Indiana. And it's located in an area called the Midwest. And that just means we share a lot of the same values. As we slowly zoom in on Indiana, you can see that Indiana is full of towns in different locations. So up here in northern Indiana, it's pretty flat. Down here in southern Indiana, it's really hilly. And right dead center right there is Indianapolis. That is our capital. And so I want to talk about how Indiana got its landforms and lakes. So like I said earlier, up here, is really flat and down here is really hilly. How could that happen? Well, it happened hundreds of thousands of years ago. And the way that happened is a big glacier used to cover most of North America. A glacier is a big chunk of ice that can be hundreds of feet thick and it slowly moves across the land. As it does it, it slowly takes what used to be hills and grinds them down into just flat, flat pieces of land. It also leaves big chunks of deposits all across this land. So the northern half of Indiana, hundreds of thousands of years ago, was ground flat by a glacier. And at some point in time, the glaciers melted and left the rolling hills of the south. So where we live, it's really hilly, but in northern Indiana, it's very flat. With that, I want to talk about some of those landforms that we see throughout Indiana. But to do that, I think we got to go see them. Let's go on an adventure. Welcome to the Northern Plains. This is a very flat area. There's very little trees. This is where the glaciers ground it down and left it really smooth. But what they did is they made that, that soil very fertile. And what's fertile soil good for? Let's go find out. What are, is that flat land great for? Obviously, it's great for farming. All of you know that Indiana has tons of farmland. Let's go visit the south. Welcome to southern Indiana. Southern Indiana, where the glaciers did not touch, is full of thick forests and lots of steep rolling hills. Uh, these are not always as fertile and can be very rocky compared to the north because the glaciers didn't smooth them down. So as you can see, Indiana has tons of landforms. Some of the other ones we didn't visit today are big valleys, uh, beaches up near the sand dunes of the Great Lakes, or just to name a few that we didn't touch on. But what do all these things have in common? Well, they're part of what we call the lith lithosphere which is basically all of the land mass on Earth makes up the lithosphere, and there's different pieces of it, and Indiana just happens to have a few. Along with the lithosphere, there's also a hydrosphere, and that is all the different pieces of Earth that are made up of water. Let's go visit one of those that are very common in Indiana. So here we are visiting part of the hydrosphere in Indiana. Indiana has tons of these. As you can see, this is a small pond and they're all across the state. Indiana also has 
lakes, and even one of the biggest lakes in the world, Lake Michigan. Along with lakes, we also have rivers, streams, and small little creeks. These are all in Indiana and all part of the hydrosphere. How does the hydrosphere work? I'm glad you asked. Let's go on a walk to talk about it. So, what does the hydrosphere have in common? Well, first we should look at the word hydro. Hydro means water. So all these things are connected by water. They're also connected in another way, the hydro cycle, or how water moves around Indiana. Mostly, this is done uh, when water evaporates from lakes, rivers, streams, and creeks, and it turns into a little gas that goes up into the clouds. Once the clouds get big enough, they will have precip precipitation. Precipitation, blah, Mr. B screws up his words sometimes. That can come down in many ways. Hail, snow, and even rain. <laughs> I guess it's raining now. I'm gonna get a towel and I'll meet you back at the headquarters. All right, welcome back to headquarters. I'm gonna dry off real quick here. Uh, I might even take off my glasses. I can't see from them. Well, so that was a quick lesson on how Indiana uh, got its landforms and how the uh, hydrosphere is used. So again, a couple things I want you to remember. Lithosphere is all the pieces of land on Earth. And I want you to remember that Indiana has a whole ver wide variety of them, from flat plains to hilly forests. Hydrosphere is all the water on Earth. Again, Indiana has a wide variety. Big lakes, rivers, streams, and even little ponds. And how is that all connected, the hydrosphere? Through the hydro cycle, where, you guessed it, rain can happen. So, until I see you next time, have fun, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next vlog.